All right, Vin Ciotti, finalist in the men's 1500 at the Olympic trials. Eight years later, 3,000 miles away, here we are, just like the old running Maryland days. But uh, how were the trials for you? What's the intensity like climbing up with uh, all those fantastic athletes out there? Uh, yeah, it was my first first Olympic trials, uh, pretty late on to be saying that, but um, it was it was a, an exciting meet, but very disappointing. Um, I felt, I certainly felt the intensity of, of the final, and um, I went into it with a lot of confidence, uh, and I think as much as it hurts to say it, I think I let the moment get to me a little bit because I, I lost some of that confidence over the course of the race. Um, you know, I wanted to go in and, and be patient and not waste energy uh, early on. And that's more or less all I did for the first three laps. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it's it sort of came back to bite me in the last 150. and. Um, I mean, overall, the experience is still great because you know this is those are the moments that you live for. Like especially with it being delayed a year, the build up to it seems so long. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it I haven't had a lot of races of that caliber, and it obviously showed that you know I can't just be fit. I need to get my tactics right, and I got them pretty wrong. So just gotta learn from it. Yeah, live and learn. So uh, yeah, it's been a while since there's been a lot of racing. Um, so you guys had three races, four days, three rounds, four days. How do you prep for that mentally and uh, knowing that you might be tired for the last day? Yeah, um, to be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, for me, it was more the tactical sort of savvy that you need in championship racing. I just haven't had a lot of that. At the pro level, it's very different than college, you know. Mm -hmm. In college, we have, you know, a conference meet where you're running rounds, regional meet where you're running rounds, NCAs where you're running rounds, and, you know, you're sharpening up. Uh, and at the pro level, it's because you have to get the standard to mm -hmm. really have a shot to make the team. It's, it right. becomes a lot of time trialing, which I don't really like, to be honest. And mm -hmm. um, that's also part of what's been frustrating about my performance in the in the trials final because the tough part for me was always going to be getting the standard and when I actually got it uh, I was really excited like to go into the meet with the actual standard so um, yeah the, the, the I felt like I was strong enough to deal with the rounds I actually felt better in the semifinal than I did in the prelim and I felt better in the final than I did in the semifinal um, but I think I could have done with a bit more racing mm -hmm. just to prep like uh, prep for the tactics even even if I was prepared physically because that's right. just as important so. so you are the first heat uh, for both rounds does that make a difference do you feel like that's an advantage or disadvantage did that make a difference when you were in college um, I do in the first round it wasn't necessarily I knew we were only eliminating like three or four guys mm -hmm. out of 30 so I was pretty confident in the first round but I knew the semi would be a tough race um, and I do think the second heat has you know, the second heat obviously has an advantage because they know what they need to do mm -hmm. time-wise. Um, but saying that, I have, sort of have the philosophy, like once you know you're in that first heat, you can't worry about whether or not, you know, I could have been in the second heat. I mean, the way I ran the semifinal was, was pretty pretty dumb tactically too, to be honest. I just got away from it, got away with it because it was a semifinal. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I was... You know, I gave myself way too much work to do in the last 150. Um, and it was good to show that I had that gear there. That gave me some confidence for the final. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess being in the first heat, you don't even think about the, the time qualifiers anymore. Right. You're basically just saying, okay, I have to go and get an auto cue because no matter how mm -hmm. fast we run, the second heat could go faster. Yeah. So in that in that sense, it's it almost 
helps you focus on just not worrying about the time qualifier, making right. sure you get the big cue. So you ran the last race at the old Hayward, and now you're on the OTs at the new Hayward. Is there a certain glamour to the stadium? No doubt. Uh, I mean, the old Hayward, it was different in the old Hayward because it was obviously, you know, pre-COVID. It was three years ago, so it was, you know, packed full. It was the last day of NCA, so, you know, a lot of athletes in, in the stands. Um, but, I mean, I still felt the atmosphere here for sure. Like, even though it wasn't full capacity, like, racing at night, too. Was, was neat because the first two days were you know, sort of in the afternoon and mm -hmm. we raced at like 9.45 or whatever it was. Um, it, you know, it just, it makes me wish I'd done more with the occasion, but it was, it was really, it's an incredible stadium. No, no, no doubt. Yeah, so you've been pretty successful, um, you know, making the finals, running 334, uh, a couple second places in NCAAs. What do you hope to do in the near future and uh, what do you want to do to kind of take your training to the next level yeah um to be honest i've had pretty good training the past two years and i think um this is sort of the second time that i've actually had a good two-year stretch because uh, my first few years of college were pretty crap um and then i sort of put it together the last two and a half years and i went from being you know a relative unknown to second twice at NCAs mm -hmm. and then I got injured and basically had to re restart that entire cycle as a pro and I've gone from relative unknown to still relative unknown who's run 334 so mm -hmm. um, but I think in the near future I'd like to you know, have a bit of a little problem going on right now but I, I, I want to get back to racing and just I think having something to focus on will help put the trials, you know, sort of disappointment out of my mind and um, the qualifying window for Worlds next year is already open and Worlds is right here. Right. So, I mean, that's, you know, obviously the Olympic dream is, is on hold, but a World Championships in your hometown is, is more or less the same thing. Like, um, and so, you know, I know that I still have to stay on it for the next year. Next year's a world indoor year too. So two more opportunities in the next 12 months to make a team. And that's, you know, that's exciting that I don't have to wait that long. And, and hopefully just, um, you know, I, I'd like to, th this summer is just about getting more racing. And like I was sort of mentioning, I'd only raced three times before the trials, which is weird. Mm -hmm. you know, compared to right. college when you're yeah. racing all the time. So it'll be good to sort of spend the next month or two just competing, like trying to have a little more fun, like now that, you know, it's not quite as pressurized and still trying to run fast um, and at least get my qualifier for next year. Okay. All right. Well, I think you did a great job. You know, Thanks. certainly uh, being there is an awesome accomplishment, awesome experience. So uh, we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you.